Neonic Void Productions presents Welcome to Spook Apocalypse. I am your host and not DM because that's a different show. Uh, Zio, I almost said my name. Zio. <laughs> Fired. <laughs> and today, I you can't fire me. I have immunity. I am joined with Bunyip and Housekeeper. As per usual. For an April Fool's joke, I think what we should do specifically to Zio is just have him introduce an episode. And they're like, you you said book watchers. I did? Yeah, you did. You got to do it again. I mean, he's and done ju- and just right. And just keep doing it <laughs> until he realizes we're messing fuck? with him. Hold up. Did y'all do that to me? Did I literally do that on Sunday when we recorded for Vordotica or were y'all Yeah, but that wasn't me? a joke. Like, you actually fucking said. I actually did. Two- Damn. You're like, welcome to Spookocalypse, and we're all like, bro, this ain't spook. <laughs> and you're like, what? What? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Well, I don't know. I never know. I don't pay attention to what I say when it comes to that. <laughs> it just comes out. <clears throat> but no, yeah, y'all could totally do that. And I believe you because I'd be like, what did I really say that? What? Who am I? <laughs> anyway, hi. What's good? What's popping? Yeah. Cool. Wow, y'all are just so. <laughs> y- y'all just leave it. Y'all just leave me in I the middle thinking, of the ocean. Like I was thinking what? of a flavor for the mint. <laughs> Uh, housekeeping let's go into housekeeping (laughs) cool all right if you like this podcast make sure you follow and rate us on whatever site you may be listening to this podcast or any of your podcasts really share with your friends new episodes get uploaded every saturday or whenever they are remembered jesus (laughs) christ stop it i will find you (laughs) yeah. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> links i got that. i can't be fucking laughing my stomach hurts links are down in the description for other podcasts that are part of the neonic family follow us on twitter um no this is not an old episode i just will never call it by that name our handle is at spookocalypse that's at s-p-o-o-k-o-c-a-l-y-p-s-e E, we also have a YouTube. If you are on YouTube, hi, hello, welcome. Make sure you check out our other shows that are on the channel. Make sure you drop a like, um, subscribe, or, you know, drop a comment down on um, your favorite part or um, a subject that you might want to listen to in the future. Uh, we're going to be doing some spooky shit. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to, you know, tickle that d- bell or, you know, punch it. Whatever suits your fancy. Uh, I don't care. I won't judge. Oh, uh, we will be doing some spooky shit on here. And um, I'm going to leave a mint right on your little pillow. And what is today's flavored mint? Weirdly enough, I'm going to go with charcoal. Charcoal? Activated charcoal. Let's go. I mean, it, it ties in with our discussion. What? Okay. Loosely, but it does. I mean, if you, uh, PSA warning: If you have birth control, um, if you are on the pill, or if you have any type of important medicine that you are taking, please do not consume activated charcoal. It cancels out the things that you are taking your medicine for. Really? Yes. So, like, if you have like ADHD, if you have um the medicine for bipolar disorder or something along those lines 
or you are on the pill for birth control, if you take activated charcoal, it absorbs the medicine and it basically makes it null and void. So it you're not getting the effects of the medicine that you just took. That's only if you ingest activated charcoal? Yeah. Okay. That or like grapefruit. Don't 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 have grapefruit if you are taking medicine in the morning. Cause that so like it. I have charcoal body stuff. I'm like <gasps> No, charcoal like, body soap is fine, but like okay. you know how like there's like black water or like charcoal water, yeah, or something, or like the charcoal um pills. If you yeah. take that, it cancels out your medicine. God. Like, like there's no point in taking the medicine if you're going to be ingesting activated charcoal. We're learning a lot today. Uh, before we get into today's episode, though, uh, since this is the honestly the um. <clears throat> What do I call it? What do I call it? Center point of Neon Avoid Productions as far as the podcast goes, like the the big one. <laughs> I would say. Really? I mean, I mean, between this one and Book Watchers, um, for those of you listening that do listen to some of the other ones, uh, House of Ideas and the Book Watchers will not be posting episodes for this month. Uh House of Ideas will come back March 4th. Oh, yeah, I got to record mine. I got to talk to you about that. Yeah. No, you're fine. Uh, the, the episodes for House of Ideas will be coming back March 4th only because I need time to um, get recordings done because we had to put back on, we had to push back on scheduling due to some issues, some uh, stuff going on with guests of mine as well as myself. Um, and Book Watchers is going on a small hiatus till the February 29th. Uh, we are in the middle of recording episodes for season three, as well as doing some other surprises of the uh, video variety. So look forward to that in the February, but spook and that's it. Spook spook is the only one that's going to be posted this month. And Voidonica is still in the works of editing. I'm going too hard. It has taken me forever, but it is happening. Because I want this, I want game, what is it? Campaign 2 to be great, to look good for the video portion of it. So bear with me. I can just post the audio portion, but I want to post it all together at once. So I'm being, I'm being very particular and shit. So bear with me on that. That will be get posted soon. Um, But yeah. So throwing that out there for anyone that listens. If you don't know what I'm talking about, and again, as the housekeeper said in the description below, you can follow to all the other podcasts with the link tree as well as the YouTube. Go check them out. Book Watchers is fun. And same with House of Ideas if you want to learn more about comic books, characters, and such. So, anyways, what are we talking about today? So, we're talking about a little game called Alyssa. Uh, Alyssa. All right. So, to give some background on this game, it released, uh, I think it was 20, 2021 that it came out. I think so, yeah. Yeah, close to Halloween. It was developed by Casper Crows with the music done by someone named Arissa, A-R-I-S-A. And those two mm. pretty much did most of the work on the game, but there are some other people credited. I just didn't get a lot of them because they're all in the credits. But these two are the biggest contributors to this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. So the game is, I believe, okay, it's on Steam. Um, I'm not sure if it's on Good Old Games. I didn't check, but it's definitely on Steam. And it looks like the first Resident Evil game for the PlayStation 1. Yeah, it does. It gives mad RE1 vibes. It sure does. In fact, you could argue that it's heavily inspired by that first game. Yeah. Like, definitely the graphical style. The palette looks a little brighter, but that's just because of the setting. But point is, um, we're going to get into some of how the gameplay works and then the story. And then a big chunk of this episode is going to be, like, piecing all of the story together and theories onto what all happened. Because it is in pieces, and you do have to look a little bit and look at, like, the notes and the lore to understand the timeline of events. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I I read somewhere. Um, so like uh, it says here, Alyssa is influenced by classic survival horror titles and the 1988 stop motion film Alice by Czech filmmaker Jan. And I, if someone told me how to pronounce this, I will 100 percent try to pronounce this, but I don't know how to read Czech, so I mm. can't pronounce this name. You know what? I'm just going to put it in the translator and see if they can do it. Hold on. Because I want to know how to pronounce it. I don't want to be that person. Yeah. Not what I want. Uh, Copy. How to pronounce I don't think it's gonna tell me how to pronounce this. Cool. Um I'll just I'll I'll here you go. That's his last name. I wouldn't even know how to begin to pronounce that. Svan. Yeah, and that symbol over the S, I'm not sure what that sound is supposed to be. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm Van so sorry. Ka- Van. 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 Ka- Mare? Ma- Ma- Mare? Mare? Yeah. Well, I don't know. The J may be like a, like a, I don't know. I'm sorry, y'all. Speculation. I don't... I'm so Speculation. sorry. I'm <laughs> <Speculating>. so sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Teach me how to pronounce it and I'll pronounce it the way you want me to. Anyway, but yeah, I read that it's based off of the stop motion film Alice by this Czech filmmaker. Are you, um, fuck Meyer? Funkmeyer? Nine years old, Wayne. I think it's called, I think it's pronounced Fuckmeyer? Because that's a, because that's a last name, apparently. It is a last and, name. Because I'm looking up, like, how to say it. There's one, like, Jan, like, J A N is the first name, and I'm, like, listening to the last name. Yes. It sounds like Funk, Funkmeyer? Funkmeyer? Yeah. Okay. What kind of so sounds like? John Falkmeyer. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. That's what it sounds like, anyway. If that's Thank correct you. or not, that's to be seen. But Thank again, we are not native speakers of the Czech language. We're not even familiar with it, honestly. It's 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 one of those languages that just it's a lot. It's a lot. It's one of the harder languages in the world, as far as I know. <laughs> Polish. Ooh, the stop motion film might be on Amazon. <gasps> it says it's a dark fantasy film. Does that count as horror? It can be. Like <laughs> we'll the... we'll make it count. <laughs> no, I mean I mean it could be because like um once in future, the book that I'm currently talking about, spoiler alert for book watchers, is technically dark fantasy. But it's still also in the horror genre because there's blood and guts and shit. And like yes. undead. Uh oh, shoot. It's what's Fandor? Fandor? Mm-hmm. Uh, no clue. Cause you could have a seven day free trial and you could watch it on Fandor. Oh. Okay, I see. I see. Anyway. But it's heavily inspired by Alice? By his the by movie. This film? This film? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, wait. It might be on YouTube. Oh. Yeah, wait. Language. Is Alyssa a Alice in Wonderland story? 
In a way, yes, because you do get pulled into a hole at the beginning. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, now that you mentioned this movie, I'm like, oh. I didn't even think about that. Actually. I did different <laughs> kinds of research, but Housekeeper found something entirely different. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> and uh, ooh. Didn't even think about that. Well, this is based off of like a because like not only did I watch the gameplay, but I watched other people's reviews. Um, one of them that I'm referring to, I love this username. I love it so much. The username is called Boulder Punch. Boulder Punch. Boulder Punch, and Work. it is a picture of Chris. <laughs> Chris Redfield. Oh God. <laughs> Like pushing, pushing. It's great. I love. Shout out to that's fucking amazing. I love it so much. But yeah, like uh, in the about part of it, it says like on the bottom it says Alyssa is influenced by classic survival horror titles and the 1988 stop motion film Alice. Um, on the bottom of it, that's one of them I'm ref- referencing. Mm-hmm. But shout out to that name. That is fucking amazing. Alrighty, so let's get into it. All right, so it starts off. You work, I assume, for your government in espionage, and someone stole some blueprints, and you have to get them back. So you ride a train to this village on the outskirts of... It's just like a village. And based on the accents, it sounds like everybody is French. And it seems like it takes place in early 1900s France. I didn't see a date specified, but based on the notes that you find in game there, the latest one was dated 1891. So I'm assuming that it's close to around that time. Yeah. You're running around with your... Yeah, you're playing as Alyssa, and you're running around with an with a partner. I don't think he's given the name, but the first thing you do is you investigate a house that's in this village that seems to be abandoned, and he talks with the old man who lives there, and the only thing that you can do as a player is just go upstairs and look at some pictures. One is of two women. One is named Elise, and the other one is like a gray-haired lady who wears black and has her face obscured. Which is an interesting detail. Yeah. But we'll get into that later. Ooh. But you you leave the house because you don't really find anything. You He said like the spy that they're looking for, or the one who stole the blueprints, ran off into the woods. And the town was supposed to be a place, I think it was possibly a mining town, but there's... I think there's only the old man who lives here. There's no one else. And a lot of people moved because work was just not doing well and they can get factory jobs in the city. So then you find the thief and you both chase after him, but your friend falls over and he says, I swallowed my toothpick, which that must have hurt. Yeah. But yeah, you chase him into, I don't know how to describe this. It's like a, it's like an, a clearing that's, not on the same level as the trees. It's like a large pit, and there's a... What is that structure? I don't want, I don't think it's a pavilion, is it? Uh... It looks like a square structure with columns and a triangular roof. I think that's a pavilion. Yeah, it's We'll stick with that. And then these weird doll-like amalgamations sprout up, and they crawl after your character. And at this point in the game, you don't know how to play, so you're just doomed to lose. And then these creatures drag you underground. You wake up some moments later, and your character, Alyssa, is wearing a doll-like outfit. And she's confused as where she is, and she tries to leave the room, noticing it's locked, but goes over to this 
nightstand and opens it and finds a gun. Like she, I don't, she may have had a gun earlier, but it was taken away. But then they're like, here's a new gun for you, just in case. There's also a key that gets you out of the room and a note that reads, I only did what I was told, but the gun is a little gift from me. Welcome to your new home. Yeah. So now you're officially in this big mansion that is underneath the earth. Oh, God. Trauma. I'm getting flashbacks. (laughs) No. (laughs) Housekeeper housekeeper knows. Flashbacks. Oh, yuck. A fucking mansion. (laughs) Fuck that mansion. You know what's funny? (laughs) As I was watching, like, this, like, three-hour long video the other day of the Mm. whole storyline and like it shows like like one of the prequels to the game and it shows the uh blueprints for that mansion so you get to see it in all its glory and all i saw was just flashbacks (laughs) of the map that we looked at for six months i was like (laughs) nom style flashbacks (laughs) continue on buddy (laughs) kind of curious of what you're referring to D D. so there was a D&D oh. game, yeah that we played <laughs> it used to be a wednesday game and then it switched to thursdays and to put it into perspective um for a long time listeners i don't know if this was ever mentioned it was mentioned because it was horror books that you went to go pick up um zeo broke his elbow yes going it was to yes pick yes, up it these is. fucking books the ring series the ring series and by the time we were like by the time we were done going through this match and that our dm because like oh god i knew exactly what it was whenever we walked into like he had it all drawn our dm and he had it just laid out on the table and i was just like i saw it and i was like i want to die now <laughs> and you just hear him laugh because no one else knew no one else in that room recognized that map and it was the fucking spencer mansion map from resident evil one and I saw it, and I was just like, oh. Oh, no. But oh, what housekeeper, be a problem. But what housekeeper's getting at, when we, when we first went into it, not too long after, I broke my elbow. Mm-hmm. When we finally finished it, I was already out of the cast, and my arm was, like, I was Almost slowly, cute. I was still going through physical therapy, but my arm was out of the cast and everything. That's how long it took us to get through that mansion. Six months. And so for six for six long months, we were stuck in that fucking mansion. We were stuck in that mansion. We looked at that freaking. You know what? I'm gonna go through my. You uh, continue talking about him. I'm gonna con- I'm gonna go through my pictures and see God. if maybe I could f- <laughs> find, find the map, the map like the filled out map. Because like yeah. so every day, if we discovered something, I was I was the one picking up a marker. And filling it out. So when he's just like, oh yeah, like the carpet's yellow here or the carpet's purple. Like I colored in like purple or yellow or green. And then like I put where the furniture was as he described it. And like, oh my gosh, like it was deep in detail. I'm gonna yeah. look for it. I'm gonna look for it. But anyway, sorry for that tangent yeah, that sorry, talking sorry. about a mansion drop. <laughs> just <laughs> I hate it here. So back to our story, yeah. um, when you um, you basically figure out how to use your inventory to find an item, such mm-hmm. as this key you just got that's on a big old key ring, and use that to unlock the door. And then you enter the next room, and there's a mechanical doll that's sifting through the body of another doll. And when you approach it, it turns its head around to look at you. You know, like in the first Resident Evil game, where a zombie like does the exact do. same thing. Yeah. And then it gets up and attacks you, and you have to use your gun to shoot it. Ah. And oh, wow. the thing about this game is it has tank control, so you have to turn your character and then press forward if you want to go anywhere. You can't strafe. So it can it can feel a little terrifying to try and move because it doesn't feel as direct. You have to get used to it a little bit. But also, aiming your gun, you have to hold up your gun, wait, 
move your character, rotate them until like the little aiming signal next to your ammunition counter turns orange, and then you fire. Otherwise, you'll miss. And sometimes this thing can be hard to aim, but it's just something to get used to in the game, and I do like this mechanic. But anyways, you shoot this thing dead, and it drops a bunch of little cogwheels. These are called tooth wheels, and they serve as currency. And another purpose, but we're going to... That'll come later. Ooh. So yeah, you look at the room, it's like, this is a big old mess, like a fight took here. So the doll that you just killed is dead. And then the doll it was sifting through is presumably dead as well. But then you leave and you find another room where you find a hand puppet called Paul. And he sells you ammunition, new weapons, and new dresses. And he trades tooth wheels for these. And he also lets you save your progress. Um, and I like how if you point your gun at him, he just slinks away. Like, yep. Dude, that puppet. <clears throat> that puppet had me dying the entire game. Yeah, it's adorable for the time being. <laughs> That's the key word. Yeah, just everything. I feel like everything is a facade in this game. It. It's a lot. But anyway. Um, so one of the first things you'll do is you'll solve this puzzle involving the sliding blocks to get one of the keys. And then you is it because the doors in this game all have keys that um, uh, they all require keys that have to match a certain kind of lock. And it's based on some shape like here is the left hand key, which goes to doors that have a left hand lock. And then there's like a right hand key, an eye key, a fish key, a tree key, and stuff like that. And one of the first puzzles that you'll be getting into is to enter the fun house. To enter the fun house, which is behind this chained up door, you have to find three letter blocks and spell out the word fun. So you have to find these letter blocks everywhere. And this gives you a little bit of lore onto someone named Edmiston, who seems to be experimenting on patients. As where these patients have come from, we don't know yet. But he seems like a sadistic person, and he's been locked up in the House of Fun. But as you explore and you get your blocks, you go through the gated door to the Fun House, and you're in this dark hallway with jail cells. And sometimes there's doll arms that reach through the, the, through the jail cells. Excuse me. But yeah, you navigate through the fun house, which is basically a big circus with a lot of circus themed enemies that are creepy, especially those that are just they're just giant heads with tiny legs. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, there is mention of in this place, there is mention of something called the Manor of Tides, especially in like the infirmary area. And it's implied that maybe the Manor of Tides is funding some of these experiments. Mm -hmm. um, basically, this area is solving puzzles to find keys to go through other doors to get cone hats, like kind of like the birthday cone hats. And then these go on statues that are in a room that's towards the back of the circus area. Um, skip ahead a little. Oh, yeah. So you place these hats on three busts. One is for Isabella Flora, Herman Heinrich Hahn, and Simon Celsius. And they were all prolific figures in certain fields. Like, I think Isabella Flora was for horticulture, um, Herman and Simon. Uh, I think one was mathematics. But point is, one of those names is going to come back in later. But also here you'll find a note that mentions something called the Finger of God, which it sounds like a structure, like a rock structure. And people who 
touch it or like injure themselves on it. Because one of the guys injured his hands on it by accident and his hands looked like charcoal afterwards. And I think they're trying to imply that it was petrified. Ooh. So basically, this is a very important artifact and you don't want to injure yourself on it or you might hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And let's see. When you get all those three hats and you put them on these stone bus, you unlock this big door. And then you step in and you encounter your first boss, which is Pierre Edmiston. Basically, he's just in this really big machine, big, big machine, and he just sits in the center, and you have to fight him. Mm -hmm. And then when he breaks the, and then when you break the machine with your weapons, at this point you have like a handgun and a blunderbuss. Once you break the machine, he comes out and he tries to hit you with a mallet. Just all in good fun. Of course, as it should be. <laughs> of course. When he dies, you're like, oh, yes, you, you win. That's that's excellent. Although, when you turn around, some strings pull him up, implying that he was a doll. That's not weird. Yeah, not weird in the slide. What? Oh, the mention map. Mm-hmm. But as you pick up an important item, which is used for solving a puzzle slightly later in the game, the floor breaks out beneath you. And then you fall into this hallway that's flooded with water. And you find this door that loops back to this stairwell, which is like, oh, you were it's like, oh, you were here before when you were looking for letter blocks. But it loops back to this stairwell. And I was like, oh, good, shortcut. Sorry, I'm just sending things that I found that I wanted to share. Especially this one, this cursed, this cursed image right here. Meme. Oh God. <clears throat> anyway, continue, continue. Bunya. I'm trying to. Uh, let's see. So, basically, you'll be in an area that seems to be very water themed, and it's mm -hmm. implied that. The water at some point used to be soil, like it was changed. And there's a character who can seemingly change substances around her. And I'm thinking she was an experiment, and this is one of the powers that she gained as a result of this experiment. Also, if you run back in the pole again, because he can appear in different rooms as a vendor, Pierre, as a hand puppet, shows up. And he begins to sell you modifications. So if you want to add some mods to make your character have an easier time fighting, like I think there's one that allows you to like do a jump back kind of dodge, you can add mods to yourself. Oh, that's cool. But there's a there's a catch to using these mods, which we'll get into later. You can also buy certain rewards based on how many bosses you've beaten, such as because you beat Pierre, you can buy his mallet and something called a tooth stone, a teeth stone, which is inserted into certain faces that are embedded into walls and they unlock secret areas. But that's not too crucial to the story. When you make your way back to the funhouse, because you still have to use this item you got a pulse meter which is used to help solve a puzzle you'll find a new note that you had noticed before and it says my mother escaped she is roaming the hallways and search for me it's possible that she senses a similar a similarity between us so watch out she will try to catch you and earlier um one of the cone hats that you get when you do this giant doll in a black dress that was in a glass case breaks out and through the rest of the game this thing will show up randomly to attack you and you can kill it it's just it's just difficult to do so. And it's possible that this is the mother that the note is referring to. But this pulse meter, you use it on a grandfather clock and it measures ticks and it produces like a four digit code. So it'll like, it'll like move a dial to be like five, five, one, one. 
or something like that. And then you insert that code into like this blue safe. You open that and you get grandfather clock hand. You put that on the grandfather clock and then it spits out a key when it gets the time right. And then this lets you explore the flooded basement more. And mainly here you'll run into another room where you can find pole, but also like a hot springs kind of bath. And you can bathe in that to heal your health. And there is also this there's also this scene in which you fall into a big room and the walls close in on oh. you. And you have to solve it really quick. And then when you escape, Alyssa comments that she was almost a sandwich. Ooh. Another Resi reference. Oh. Um, just a sec. Oh yeah, there's another puzzle that involves you're going to like this bathroom, and if you look into the mirror, just there's fish start swimming behind you in the reflection, and you have to count the fish. And then you have to go all the way back up to this room. Like it's a music room, and there's a piano that has like a piano lid that's locked, and you insert the number of fish corresponding to each color of the fish to unlock mm -hmm. that. In the room, there's also these big, tall ballerina dolls that try to step on you. No. Yeah, lots of interesting enemies that show up in this game. And they're all different kinds of dolls, like, like, a, like a toy soldier or a ballerina. And, oh, hang on. I guess you'll stumble across this one area that has like a giant manhole and then there's a doll in a dark red dress lying next to it. And she's like, she doesn't attack you. She's just like, I'm missing my leg. Uh, I think the doll's down there took it. Can you go get it? And I sincerely thought she was going to like close the manhole on you just to be like, <laughs> you're trapped now. But no, you have to just defeat three waves of enemies and one of them drops a leg and then you bring it back up and you give it to her. Homegirl just wanted her leg. Yeah, and then she gives you... I think she gives you like a locked book, <clears throat> which is used in another puzzle, and then she just crawls away really swiftly. Yeah, she just wanted her leg. Pretty much. And as you navigate your way through the flooded basement more, and you find other areas that have a lot of water in them, you end up in a room that's particularly large. It has a statue of a woman reclining on a chair. And you get something called the Poseidon disc, which is used as part of a puzzle later. And then the statue wakes up. And this is Edith. And she was referenced as the person who could change substances, mainly the soil, into water. And your new doll friend helps you out in this fight. So after you take care of Edith, while Alyssa isn't looking... The lady, like the doll lady in the black dress, just swoops down, picks up Elise, um, the doll friend, and just snatches her away. E so then you're navigating your way to the library, which when I found out where the library was, I thought it was, I thought it was like the second door in the first room where you meet Pole, but no. It's not that door. The layout looked like it'd just be like a second door. But I was like, no, this door goes to a completely different room. But yeah, you check the library and there is an unusual looking bookshelf and you put the locked book in that slot. And then you solve this puzzle that involves pushing and pulling books until they're all pushed in. And no, you pull them out and then you push them all in except the, except the middle one. Point is, it pushes the middle book out and it lock it and unlocks the book for you, and you get another key, which leads us to the garden, which I think most of the lore, like the most crucial pieces of lore, show up. In this garden, you find plant-based doll creatures, namely 
I don't know if they have official names, but they're like they're gray looking plant dolls that look male and look female. And then there's also wasp looking dolls that fly around and try to get you. The notes you read imply that there was there was treasure hunters looking for treasure, and then they found this mansion. And there's also notes implying that there were miners that showed up earlier, and their main goal was to look for coal. But despite being there for weeks, they could not find any coal. And I found it odd. It's like, oh, there's they're here. They think there's coal here, but there isn't. And they're getting paid a lot to be here. Don't you find that slightly suspicious? And some of them, yeah, some of them do leave because they hear of a rumor that 60 years ago, like, like these notes are dated 1891. So 60 years ago in 1831, an asylum was swallowed up by a sinkhole. And well, this, I don't think it's the mansion itself. It, it could be the mansion itself that was an asylum and then it was converted into what it is now, or if it was just the asylum was part of this mansion. Like, I don't entirely know that one. But as you navigate through the maze, I mean, sorry, the garden, including a trellis maze and other things, um... Oh yeah, you come across this stone bridge, you go across that, you open the gate, and you encounter your third boss, which is Isabella. The same Isabella Flora mentioned earlier. She's sitting on this stone throne, yeah, this stone throne, and she is pretty much a plant doll hybrid, and she fights with a sword and shield. After you take care of her, she drops and I think she laments like the loss of the beauty of her garden. And as you leave and go across the stone bridge, it sounds like her voice being like, this garden is wonderful. It's got flowers from every season. And then it's, and for the time being, it, you see what this garden looked like during the day. But then it fades back to night and everything's dead. And Alyssa finishes the last line. It's an odd scene. In fact, some of these odd things have happened that seem like Alice in Wonderland. I'm seeing the parallels more and more. Oh, really? But ultimately, you'll be making your way to this final area called the Cathedral. And to do this, you had to fix the elevator, which ran on a machine. Yeah, that, that was kind of like a side thing, but yeah. You fix the elevator, and now that it works, you can go up the elevator to the cathedral. And this lets you get something called the warrior disc. And this is used for these two statues that were found way early in the game, in the um, stairwell area. You go through these two statues, you go through this door, and it's another part of the cathedral that was blocked off. And as you walk through, you'll run across something. I'm not sure what they are. They basically look like heavenly griffins with machine guns as faces. They have a great looking design. But it's the first and only time the game is like, okay, now you have to sneak. So you, you just crouch down and sneak past them and you do okay. In... You operate some switches to unlock a few doors. And these doors become important because they're crucial for finishing the game. And there's a particular there's two main things of note here. One of them is from Pierre Edmiston. I don't want to admit that I'm failing, but it's true that my patients keep petrifying and dying. Flora Isabella already succeeded to give her plants eternal life, but what if I found a way to reanimate the deceased? So this tells me that Isabella was likely already dead before we showed up and met her. 
when she was possibly converted into a doll. And hmm. basically you could say that Pierre likely made all of these dolls and many of these dolls probably came from people who were, who used to be human. And how exactly did they become dolls? It's like, he used the tooth wheels that you've been collecting. At least parts of them. Like, he infuses them with your skin, and they become part of you, and you turn into a doll. But other than that, the second most interesting thing is a glass display case, a, a, a glass display case that shows a rock structure labeled the finger of God. And it was donated to the St. Johannes Institute by the Manor of Tides. So now I want to know who the Manor of Tides is supposed to be and what was this institute originally used for? Which, like, was this was the institute the same as the asylum that all these patients came from? Like, is that the name of this entire building or what it used to be? <clears throat> but yeah, uh, other than that, remember the guy that stole the blueprints? Well, he finally shows up. And he looks different. He's got this big Quiros and a crown. And he has two of those griffin creatures escorting him. And it's like, yeah, I got rid of the blueprints because I, I don't really care what your emperor was doing, but he's not really a threat to me. I'm, I'm the king of this castle now. And he even gets angel wings for some unexplained reason. And then you fight him whilst riding one of his griffin allies. Which I thought was really cool. Of course, after the fight, he goes crashing down and Albertus warns Elisa. Now, everyone becomes mad in this place. And he says, you should destroy the finger of God. You can destroy it with a chemical bomb. In which he's like, the bomb is almost assembled. You can find it in a room next to the library, but you also need to get chemicals to make it work. So you go and get this bomb, and you have to find the three types of chemicals in addition to a winding mechanism to wind it up and set it off at a, at a certain time. But once you have that bomb assembled, you're about to set it on the finger of God, and then this fifth and final boss shows up. He's called the Doll Master, and this was so disheartening. You wanted to know who was controlling those hand puppets. It was him. It was all him. And I, ooh? Yep. And one of the notes from earlier in the, in the infirmary said, like, I, th I, th I keep hearing crawling in the walls and one of our patients is missing. I don't know if that's related, but and I'm thinking the doll master is this missing patient. And he's mm -hmm. just been crawling all around the walls and the ceiling. And that's how Paul is able to show up virtually anywhere. Oh yeah, once you deal with the doll master, the gates that block the spiral staircase leading out go down, and then you can run out. And then this leads to our multiple endings. So our first ending is if you didn't use any of the mods at all, Alyssa leaves and is able to escape before the bomb goes off. And then she wakes up in a bed, and she sees a note that says the truth about the blueprints. 
and we have no idea what's on those blueprints, but then a tooth wheel rolls out from under her bed, and then that's the end of the game. Now, the second ending, if you used at least one of the mods, Alyssa is caught by the, one of the dolls and can't leave. And the doll master comments that the moment you were injected with the tooth wheels, you became bound to this place. So in other words, it's, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Once you get into Wonderland, are you really ever out? Pretty yeah. much. But yeah, the mods pretty much require you to infuse tooth wheels with your skin. And as we know, doing so pretty much converts you into a doll. And then the explosion still happens. And then Alyssa's playing a piano. And then the mansion rises from the earth. And then she's crawling out, but she seems mindless. Like she's not herself anymore. And there's a sniper shooting all of these dolls that are escaping, but he doesn't kill Alyssa. And the way he turns and you see a toothpick in his mouth, it's implying that it's her accomplice. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering where he got that sniper rifle from. Because I don't remember mm -hmm. him having it earlier. Almost like the people who sent her on, who sent the two on this mission, knew about this place. Like I can't prove that, but it makes one speculate. Yeah. Although yeah. the third ending, which I find particularly interesting, is if you're using all six mods, Alyssa shoves the chemical bomb in the doll master's mouth and sits on one of the dolls that took her from underground, and then they just roam away like. Like they're her entourage, and she just like waves goodbye, like bye, and then the <laughs> doll master explodes. <laughs> bye bye. And then she is in a white dress, and she owns all of the dolls now. She's the new master. Get a girl. And she also holds up Paul and Pierre, because she controls those hand puppets now. And her face resembles that of a mechanical doll. Now, alternatively, if you saved Elise, who is the doll that had the missing leg and was wearing the dark red dress, then she shows up with a crown and presents it to Alyssa, while the tall doll with the black dress watches from the shadows. And earlier in that old man's house, he said that, um, there was a picture of someone named Elise and a lady with gray hair and a black dress whose face was obscured. Mm. Ooh. Seems maybe coincidental. Ooh. That's suspicious. All right, so attempting to piece the story together from what I played through and watched. So it seems that in 1831, there was an asylum to treat mental patients. Also, experiments were being done on them. Likely funding was being received from the Manor of Tides. And no idea how this was all going down. But at one point, the asylum sunk into a sinkhole and, be and became this dollhouse, this mansion. Sixty years later, some miners show up to mine coal, but they can't find any coal. But people are paying, like, but their superiors or whoever hired them is paying them big money to dig for all this coal. So it's like, okay, I mean, it's paying really well, but you wonder why they're paying so much to dig for nothing. And at one point, these miners are discovered and taken by the dolls that already exist in the house, presumably to become more dolls. About two months later, some treasure hunters show up and they find the caverns that were dug by the miners. And they're like, were there people here? And they also find some metal pieces that they aren't sure are artificial or natural. But they're like, they, make it, they might make us rich. And they might be referring to the tooth to the tooth wheels. I think the dolls chase them down and infuse their bodies with metal fragments, aka the tooth wheels. And 
as for like why they would need coal, I was I was wondering like why would the doll master controlling the vendor of the game bother to sell you guns and ammunition, you know, something that could kill him? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, he has to have a motivation to collect tooth wheels, right? Presumably <laughs> to make more dolls, including you, Alyssa. And I was like, okay, what about the ammunition? He would probably... Do you know what gunpowder is made out of? Um, Saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal. Yes. Ooh. So I'm thinking he had a bunch of people mine charcoal so that he could make all this ammunition to sell to you. Although, for... A game system that's like, hey, here's some guns and weapons you use. You probably don't need too much of an explanation, but I do like that little touch. Because what if that's why all the coal's missing? It's fair. As for Pierre Edmiston, I'm not sure where he comes from, but he seems to have been a doctor who was working in the asylum, and he was being paid to cure some kind of sickness. We don't know what kind of sickness, and I'm not sure if there was any particular epidemic going on in France in the 1800s that could be a tie-in. But every time he tried to cure patients, he like they kept becoming petrified or just straight up dying. And some of them seemed to not die, but gain other powers, such as Edith, who, when you defeat her, she doesn't spit out tooth wheels she spits out a bag of tooth wheels implying that they're not part of her she was just collecting them mm. whereas Pierre I believe he spits out tooth wheels because he eventually became a doll and for Isabella she also became a doll and she spits out tooth wheels Albertus doesn't spit out tooth wheels so he's not a doll but Edmiston eventually he was like, well, seeing that I keep killing people, what if I just find a, re a way to reanimate them? And then he figured out what the tooth wheels can do. And he is able to bring them back to life, but they become mindless dolls. And then those dolls become under the control of the doll master, who um, I think was a patient that was running around and escaped. I don't know who this patient was in the past. I don't know who this patient was in their past life. And I don't know if there was someone before this guy, but it's presumed that this doll master has been here for decades. Oh. No. And for Edith, yeah, controls. She gained the power to control substances around her because of the tooth wheel infusion process. I'm guessing and one of her creations may be the fish dolls that you can kill. And when you kill them, they shatter into glass. Or everything else, just like, whenever you kill a doll, they turn dark gray. Just like the person who hurt their finger on the finger of God, and it turned charcoal, or resembling charcoal. So, that's a connection I'm making. But there's all those... This note at the bottom of the stairwell that said, why did you turn the soil into water and lock us up in the dark? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter anymore. We are glass now and the waters are our home. Please, someone bring us to the white oceans so we can swim free forever. Were you trying to say something, housekeeper? Oh, no. I was going to say, like, I think we need a little bit more time to digest this. <laughs> yeah. Like, on the surface, it seems like a love letter to Resident Evil, and it's pretty good, but it does take more time to dive deep down and see what the lore is like. And I'll skip ahead to some other parts because we might be going on a little long. So Isabella Flora, I'm guessing she was a horticulturalist, like really liked flowers, um, adored her garden, but she couldn't keep everything alive. And then... I believe Pierre gave her an option like, hey, I can help you keep your garden alive. I can keep it beautiful, but you'll have to give up your life to do it. And she does, and she becomes a doll. Although when we get to the garden, everything's pretty much dead. And then we've got Elise, who is the only friendly doll you meet. And she was that doll you saw in the very beginning that was 
being attacked by the very first doll that you run into. Is she also the same doll that, like, helps you later? Like, she's like, hey, I need my leg. Yep, same person. And then we mentioned the old man and the two daughter, the two women in the photo that he had. So I'm guessing that might be his daughter. I mean, same name, similar description. Logical. Mm-hmm. And then, we've got, and then we have the finger of God, which is this rock that literally looks like a big old finger. And it was donated by the Manor of Tides, which I wonder where they got it from and do they know what it does? And if you examine the white dress, which is an item you can wear in game, it says it's made from the particle wires from the finger of God and it is worn by the new master. So I'm curious as to who made that dress, and did they anticipate someone coming over to take over as the new master, like to replace the doll master? And then there's those blueprints. The whole thing that started this whole story off. Because Alberta says, like, what your emperor was planning is no longer relevant to me. My safety is guaranteed here as... Is it in this castle? Because I'm king of this castle now. And then when you fight him, he just has wings, but he's not a doll. So I'm wondering if he f studied those blueprints and then used them to make himself more powerful. Mm, maybe. Like possibly, but there's no real confirmation for this. But it's the only explanation I can think of of like how he has wings and why he has this big piece of armor that he's wearing and why he has this crown um, that's pretty much all I can think of story wise is there anything you two wanted to add Hold on, let me get my thoughts together. I mean, you pretty much covered everything. <laughs> and, I mean, for a... This game was very well made, and it does look like a PlayStation 1 style game. So it, it did achieve its goal and then some. Um, did you mention that it was a Kickstarter game at all? I did not know that. It was. It was a Kickstarter game. Work. You love a good Kickstarter game. But I, it it was it was quite interesting how they really really went ham on the fact that because when I first started watching the playthrough of it, I thought for a second it was actually a PS1 game. I was like, is this actually a PS1 game or is this something from modern day? It's become a trend lately to make stuff look resembling PS1 Retro. graphics or things from the VHS era. Yeah. That um, analog horror type-esque. Well, yeah. So whenever I pulled it up, I was like, I got to make sure that this is the right game. Because I, I was just like, is it supposed to be a game that had recently come out? Or are we looking at a game that came out back in the day? And Bunyip was like, no, yeah, no, you got the right game. And I was like, like no. it came I'm like, great, <laughs> thank you. I was just like, is it supposed to look like 8-bit? That, you know, well, not 8-bit, but like, like, like very, like it looks like an old game. Like, why does it look like Half Life, or why does it look like a puppet combo game? <laughs> I mean, I'm not hating on it. I go back and yeah, I play nah. the original Resident Evil game. Oh, it's a cool style. Oh yeah, I love it. I was like, man, you could, like talk about a throwback. Yeah, throwback. And like the the fact that like the first doll that you run into that you have to fight has the same like. 
um scene that the original zombie from Resident Evil 1 does like she like looks up and like turns her head back and like looks and like looks at Alyssa which I'm just like oh my god like talk about talk about a nod to Resident Evil you know and then the fucking the fucking puppet dude that puppet had me rolling the entire gameplay. And I watched it, like, at a higher speed, so I could try and, like, get through it in time. So hearing him talk really quickly was very funny. I loved all the outfits. I love... I want to get... I want to rewatch it and study it a little bit more so I could get into the lore yeah, a little bit more, understand it a little bit more, because I was just enjoying watching the gameplay. Like, I feel like I need a little bit more time and to get really, really into the lore of this game. And they need to make more. They need to make it like Resident Evil, where it's just a continuation. Rating system? I'm thinking tooth wheels. Ooh. Okay. I mean, what what else could we try? That's fair. I mean, that's a that's a good one from where I'm sitting. Yeah, we could do two tools. Okay, I could. I'll I'll do like a little bit of the symbolism that I thought of, and then I'll give it the rating. So, I like this game because it addresses beauty and how fragile and precious beauty can be and what links people will go to to either attain it or to admire it. Like for dolls, there are these inanimate creations that do not move on their own. Like a person has to move them and control them like a marionette on strings. Or if you're holding like a stuffed doll, you have to move each part of their hands and legs and you make them do all these things and you say words for them like you're a ventriloquist. <laughs> And a lot of dolls are meant to look beautiful and remain untouched. Like you put them in a glass casing and you just admire them, but you don't really interact with them. And some of those dolls are even fragile, like like a porcelain doll. Although the dolls yeah. in this game can take a shotgun to the face and keep on walking. The spider ones, the spider ones. I can't stand the spider ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. That contortionist one in the red room. Like, I showed up there, and I'm aiming the gun out of habit just to see if I see anything, and the the aiming signal lights up, and I fire, and nothing happens. And then I move closer, the camera pans over, and I'm like, who's that in the corner? <laughs> so I shoot him, and then he just starts moving in the weirdest way. And I shoot him down, and I was like, okay, good. Why isn't there any tooth wheels sprouting up? Oh, he's not dead. Oh, stop hitting me. I don't have any more ammo. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, no. I'm dying. So the game, that the game, the playthrough that I watched, this person hardly ever shot anything. Like, they literally ran around everything. Other than, like, whenever you're in the water level and you're in that hallway that has, like, five fucking, like, mer people things in it. Like, and they killed all of those. And then, of course, like, the wave with, like, the waves of of dolls to help the, the other one get, get her leg back. and And the bosses. But, like, most of the time... This person was not killing anything. Like, they were running around everywhere. And, like, dodging attacks and shit. And then if they needed to buy something, then they would kill one of the monsters and then go and buy something. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I was like, oh, well, I mean, that's also a nod towards Resident Evil as well, because they're like, you have to conserve your ammo. You have to figure out, you know, like what zombies are worth killing and which ones aren't worth killing. And sometimes it's just best to just run past them. Or if you're doing a speed run. True. You're right. I was like, I don't have time to kill these things and buy ammo. I'm just going to zip on by. Well, you kind of have to buy ammo sometimes if you're killing the, the bosses. I don't know. True. The other one, the other one with, with the doll helping you, the doll can do most of the work, do all the work yeah. anyway. And in the chance that Eda throws a javelin at you and it doesn't shatter on anything, you're like, I'm just going to pick this up and give it right back. Yeah, so here you go. Um, you drop this, bitch. <laughs> uh, Uno reverse card, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But like the gameplay that I watched, the, dude, that boss fight was so funny. Because again, I was watching it at like one point five to two. Oh my god! And so you just see this person <laughs> running around in a circle, <laughs> like with this freaking like with the boss, while the uh, while the doll is like shooting at her. So she's like, Brrr! like you just see Alyssa just running around in a circle, like quickly. It was so funny to watch. Oh, Lord. It was great. I highly suggest watching it at a faster speed. <laughs> Just because it gives you more giggles. Um, I got the, the last few things I wanted to mention about symbolism. Is that a few of the people in the game give up their autonomy and lives willingly to become dolls, such as Isabella for her garden. Well, she just she just wanted her garden to look gorgeous, and she just had to become a doll to make it happen. And then there's a bunch of those miners and patients who likely became dolls unwillingly, and they wander around without any thought. And it's mainly for just the doll master to play around with. So overall, I think the the main theme of this game is beauty. Like, what links will people go to in order to attain it? And what if just to admire someone who has it? Like, if you can't become beautiful yourself, maybe the next best thing is to gaze in awe of another who you find appealing. But there might be a lot more to this game that we haven't even dipped into because it definitely requires multiple playthroughs to understand it all. Mm Mm-hmm. As scary as it was, combat did feel a little clunky. Like it was it was easy to get hit and I got so frustrated with reloading and aiming at times because it's like I want this like you have to stand still to aim and you don't really have a way of like dodging the step back unless you buy one of the mods. So you have to rotate and run around and get some distance. And if you can, then you have to turn around and pull your gun out and aim properly. Mm. So it can feel clunky at times. But I think it's meant to be like that on purpose because it induces panic. Just like, get the gun ready. Shoot it. Shoot it. But yeah. And I definitely enjoyed that soundtrack and this and the sound and the ambiance. Like the game definitely has this panicky feel when you try to run from things that are chasing after you. So I still recommend people should give it a try uh, give it a try and play it. But because of the combat. I'd say I'd give it four out of five tooth wheels. Four out of five? Yeah. Let's keep it. Oh, you want me to go next? Mm hmm. Uh. I want to play through it myself. I wasn't able to. We only have like a week to do shit, y'all. <laughs> we have a week between shit. Um, I would love to play it myself. Um, so, uh, what amount I could watch at the time, and the other what is it reviews that I watched to try and get what they were getting from the game as well. I'll also give it a four. I love the 
nod to the old like the uh the old survival horror um like resident evil like um oh gosh what's that game that game that uh your boyfriend let me borrow oh god um i do not remember what it's called can you describe it um You're stuck in this, you know, you're stuck in this mansion as a girl <laughs> and, huh. and instead of guns, like you use like a, like a, like a nail gun as, as a weapon. Um, and there's like failed medical experiments. Um, oh my gosh. Is this, this is, does it look a little more higher res compared to PS1 games? Yes. It's like shattered, shattered something, shattered souls, or something I, like okay. that. I was gonna guess a game that I haven't talked, heard about in a long time called Haunting Grounds. No, maybe it's a, a newer, it's a newer game. Is that what it is? Is it Shattered Souls? No. Oh my god! What the heck is the game? How how new is it? Gab Gab Smolders played it. Hold on, let me see. Because it. if you're using a nail gun, that might be nail gun massacre. No, 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 no. Something. It almost sounds like a puppet combo game. No. No, it's not. It's not like it's it like it's a uh like a nod to. It's it's a very that game is also a very um Resident Evil esque game. Um, you could also compare it to um like Fatal Frame. Um oh god. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna oh I'm gonna go freaking crazy. Tormented Souls. Yes. Tormented Souls. That's the game. So Tormented Souls is another one that has the same uh game style and then again i said like a fatal frame which they have come out with remakes of the older games itself and like again you're walking through places um figuring out puzzles uh you're stuck in like a mansion or or whatnot and you can either avoid the bad guys or you could kill them with fatal frame you're using uh a camera an old style camera with tormented soul you're using so but like i i love these style games survivor horror is something that i grew up playing and watching other people play so yeah i i the only reason why i'm giving it a four is because i want to be able to experience it myself and i can give it a um I would probably give it a five if I did experience it myself, but since I have not, because I don't have the money to buy the game, uh, I'm going to give it a four out of five tooth wheels. Um, I will agree. I will give it a four as well, because from what I did see of it, it does look... Um, it gives the total vibe of the PlayStation... Five and the I like the uh, nods to the older games like Resident Evil and, and the ones that came before it. And as far as the story, it is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, no, no, I give it the same a four. So there you go. It is a Man, four. Is... We keep giving it the same. We keep giving ourselves the same exact number for ratings. Well, we haven't had something in a while that really divided us <laughs> amongst no, the scores. Right. You're right though. We really haven't had gotten anything that actually does divide us. But we also it makes me sad. We don't we, we need we need a host that's just like, ah, this sucked. Nah, this is complete shit. <laughs> complete shit. What the fuck are you guys <laughs> watching? You making me watch this stupid shit. 
That's I mean, basically. it's it's good. It's fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as like, we always have like the same similar opinions. I mean, that may be true, but it's not always the truth either. Like, there are some things that I'm just that I love that y'all are just like, nah, fam, this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it. This ain't it, fam. <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> oh, I so, feel like it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like that. Um, in a few, like a, a few of them, like one of the ones oh. that we're recording on the 27th i'm like oh when we get when we get into march's stuff for march yeah uh, <laughs> i don't want it <laughs> i don't want it. it's gonna be everybody versus me <laughs> well no because like oh, gosh i don't want to spoil anything but, but we're, we're march is gonna be a fun month the first movie, doing that. the first movie on the twenty seventh, love it, love that movie. <laughs> like the fact that one that Indigo was uh-huh. just all like, like he got annoyed during the fucking speech, and we're like, period, sis, she's speaking the truth, she's preaching, we agree with her. <laughs> and what are we talking about? You'll find out in March, and I will recite said speech. But the one after that, I'm like, I don't know about that one, fam. That one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that one scared me and not in like a way that i wanted to be i was like Ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh, that's a vagina <laughs> 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 that's 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 not where it's supposed to be oh yeah okay now i know what you're talking about yeah, I was like, yeah. what, is she, what is she talking about like, oh now i know what you're that, talking about that Got scene, it. That Got scene. It. and i was just like mm-hmm. ah. that was the best part that was not the best part. You making me watch that movie almost made me straight. <laughs> <laughs> Which Damn. that was supposed to be like the opposite of what that movie was supposed <laughs> to be about. Like if anything, like the like what that movie's about should have made me a lesbian. But seeing that scene <laughs> almost made me scared of vaginas. Okay, <laughs> like I was just like, and I watched, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen. So that is today's episode. Catch us next time as we talk about something else. And we'll get more information on what's happening in March when we get closer to the end of the month. But until then, peace out. Bye. Goodbye.